Hello friends, my name is Dr. Nitin Saroj and welcome to Perio Basics. In this video, I'm going to talk about the classification systems for periodontal diseases which were given after 1970. Now these classification systems, they come under the infection host response paradigm. Now to understand these classification systems, first we need to go back 100 years when in 1876, Dr. Robert Koch gave the Koch postulates. Now these postulates were given to establish the infectious etiology of a disease. However, these postulates cannot be applied to the periodontal diseases because periodontitis is caused by multiple microorganisms. For the same reason, Dr. Sokransky in 1992 gave the Sokransky's postulates. Now, the foundation stone for the infection host response paradigm was laid down by the research work done by Dr. Harald Lowe and his co-workers. From 1965 to 1968, they did experimental gingivitis studies, which established that there is a significant change in the microbiota when we move from health to gingivitis. At the same point in time, Dr. Newman in 1976 and 1977 proved and showed in his experiments that the periodontal sites with active periodontal disease had a specific microbiota. Similarly, Dr. Cincinola in 1977 and Dr. Levine in 1979 proved that in patients with juvenile periodontitis, there is neutrophilic function defect. So these all studies, they acted as the foundation for the infection host response paradigm. Now before we go ahead with the classification systems that were given under the infection host response paradigm, we should know certain terminologies. Adolescent. Adolescent is the duration of lifetime when the person starts attaining the secondary sexual characteristics till the attainment of complete somatic growth. Juvenile is the childhood portion of life. Adult is the person who has attained complete maturity. Puberty is the period of life when the person starts attaining the secondary sexual characteristics till the attainment of complete reproductive capability. Now the first very important classification system that acted as the foundation for the future classification systems was given by Dr. Roy C. Page and Dr. Schroeder in 1982. They classified the periodontal diseases into five categories. The prepubertal periodontitis, the juvenile periodontitis, the rapidly progressive periodontitis, the adult type periodontitis, and acute necrotizing ulcerative gingival periodontitis. Now let's discuss them one by one. Prepubertal periodontitis. Now this condition was described to begin around the eruption or after the eruption of the primary dentition. There were two forms described under this condition, the generalized and the localized form. The generalized form was more acute and aggressive than the localized form and the generalized form was characterized by inflammation of the gingival margins with clefting of the gingival margins. Both the localized as well as the generalized forms were associated with the peripheral neutrophilic function defect. The second condition was described as the juvenile periodontitis. So this was a condition which had a circumpubertal onset and the patient had classically the incisor and the first motor involvement in this condition. The patient was usually completely treated by the non-surgical and the surgical periodontal therapy, but certain patients did not respond to both of these therapy and were referred to as the refractory patients. Now similarly, the patients had peripheral neutrophil and monocyte defect. The third condition was a rapidly progressive periodontitis. The rapidly progressive periodontitis was described in patients between puberty and the age of 35. Now, this condition was described as a rapidly progressive disease. The disease was associated with the rapid breakdown of the periodontal apparatus. During the active periods, the disease appeared as a very aggressive or acute, while during the inactive periods, the periodontium appeared like normal periodontium. Now this condition was also associated with the peripheral neutrophilic and monocytic defects. Fourth condition was adult type periodontitis. Now this condition was described in patients above 35 years of age and the patients demonstrated the periodontal 
breakdown which was consistent with the presence of local factors. The disease could be well treated by non-surgical and surgical periodontal therapy and patient could be maintained for long duration of time. The fifth condition was acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivo periodontitis. Now this condition was demonstrated with presence of crater-like lesions in the periodontium. Now this condition was acute and painful and was described in patients with immunodeficiency or severe malnutrition. Now as I have already stated, the page in Schroeder classification system acted as the foundation for many future classification systems. Now this is American Academy of Periodontology 1986 classification system. As you can see that many classes, many disease entities are same as that given by Page and Schroeder. Only one condition that is refractory periodontitis has been added in this classification system. Now what is refractory periodontitis? Now Academy stated that the refractory periodontitis cases are those cases in which an appropriate therapy has been given both surgical and non-surgical and in spite of that the disease is progressing. Now there were many criticisms to this classification system so in 1989 the American Academy of Periodontology again came up with this new classification system. Now you see in this classification system there are five categories of periodontal diseases. The early onset periodontitis, the adult periodontitis, the necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis, the refractory periodontitis and periodontitis associated with systemic diseases. Now this classification system was dependent on five factors. First, presence or absence of clinically detectable inflammation. Second, patient's age at the onset of the disease. Third, extent and pattern of the attachment loss. Fourth, the rate of progression. And fifth, association of any systemic factor. Now you can see that in this category, in this classification system, there is one category added that is the periodontitis associated with systemic diseases. Now there are many systemic diseases which have periodontitis as their manifestations. So these diseases were considered, were categorized into this category of periodontitis. Now what were the drawbacks of 1989 classification system by AAP? The first and the foremost drawback of this classification system was that this was the system was heavily dependent on the age of the patient. Secondly, there is no category describing the gingival diseases. Third, there was considerable overlap between different categories in this classification system. For example, you can classify the juvenile periodontitis, easily classify the juvenile periodontitis patient into rapidly progressive periodontitis or a rapidly progressing periodontitis patient into juvenile periodontitis case. Then, the refractory periodontitis cases were not clearly defined. And finally, the systemic diseases which were categorized in the last category that is periodontitis associated with systemic diseases, those systemic diseases were not clearly defined in this classification system. Apart from the classification systems proposed by the American Academy of Periodontology, many authors individually proposed their own classification systems during this period of time. Now this classification system was proposed by Grant, Listgarten and Stern in 1988. If you see this classification system carefully, you will see that gingival diseases category, that is gingivitis, has been added in this classification system. Along with this, Functional disorders like trauma from occlusion and disuse atrophy have also been introduced in this classification system. In the same year, 1988, Suzuki also proposed this classification system. Now, in this classification system, rapidly progressive periodontitis was classified into type A and type B depending upon the clinical presentation of the disease. In the year 1990, Dr. Jenko proposed this classification system and if you see this classification system carefully, you will see that special emphasis has been given to the neutrophilic function. Periodontitis with systemic involvement was subcategorized into three categories, the primary neutrophilic function, the secondary neutrophilic impairment and systemic diseases. In the year 1993, Rene gave an extensive classification system. Now this is Rene's classification system. And you can see that there are so many diseases added in this classification system. 
Now, in this classification system, there are basically four classes. First is gingivitis, then periodontitis, then necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis and periodontal abscess. Now, for the first time, an attempt was made to classify the gingival diseases into plaque-induced gingivitis, non-plaque-induced gingivitis and necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Periodontitis was subcategorized into adult periodontitis and early onset periodontitis. Many disorders have been included in this classifications which have periodontitis as their manifestation. Now, if you see all these classification systems carefully, you will find that attempts have been made to include as many disorders as possible to include in the classification systems. However, there were still objections, still discussions regarding a classification system that included almost all the conditions that were associated with periodontal diseases. So, the researchers from all around the world again came together under the banner of American Academy of Periodontology and in 1999 a new classification system was introduced. The AAP 1999 classification system is a very extensive classification system. In this classification system every attempt has been made to include all the conditions and diseases which have periodontitis as one of their manifestations. Now this is a simple form of this classification system. It consists of eight categories. First is the gingival diseases, plaque induced and non plaque induced. Second is chronic periodontitis, localized and generalized. Third is aggressive periodontitis, localized and generalized. Fourth is periodontitis associated with systemic diseases. Fifth is necrotizing periodontal diseases. Sixth is abscesses associated with periodontium. Seventh is periodontitis associated with endodontic lesions. And eighth is developmental and acquired deformities and conditions. Now this is the elaborated form of this classification system. As you can see that this classification is quite extensive. Now we will try to understand the key changes that have been done in this classification system. First of all coming on to the gingival diseases. As you can see that gingival diseases have been classified into two classes the plaque induced gingival diseases and non plaque induced gingival diseases. Now the plaque induced gingival diseases contains the consist of those uh, diseases which have been which are caused due to accumulation of plaque like simple gingivitis or certain systemic factors like uh, endocrine factors, pregnancy, puberty or diabetes associated gingivitis or you have certain medications which may cause gingivitis, deficiencies like vitamin C deficiencies these all have been included in this uh, category of uh, gingival diseases. Then we have the non plaque induced gingival diseases that is that is gingival diseases which are caused not due to plaque. It may be bacterial infections like the Seria gonorrhea infection or Treponema pallidum infection or viral infections like varicella zoster or herpes simplex virus infection or fungal infections like candida. Then we have dermatological disorders in this category like lichen planus or pemphigoid or pemphigus, traumatic injuries. Then we have allergic reactions, foreign body reactions in this category. Genetic factors may also cause the gingival diseases like hereditary gingival fibromatosis have been included in this category. Another key change in this classification system was the replacement of early onset periodontitis category with aggressive periodontitis. Now if you remember the 1989 AAP classification system, you will see that there is a category early onset periodontitis. Now this category includes patients aged 35 or less and who demonstrated aggressive periodontal breakdown in spite of minimal local factors. Now usually this condition is found in people with uh, age less than 35 but it may occur after 35 years of age also. So that's why in the new classification system this age bar was removed. Now the diagnosis of aggressive periodontitis is made on the basis of clinical presentation of the case the radiographic findings, possible familial aggregation, rate of disease progression, monocytic and neutrophil dysfunctions like hyperactive monocytes and the presence of putative pathogens like aggregated bacteria actinomycetes comitans or porphyrin monosingivalis. Now the disease was described in two forms localized and generalized. Localized is when less than 30% of total dentition of the oral cavity is involved 
and generalized when more than 30% of uh, total dentition of the oral cavity is involved. Another change that was done in this classification was the replacement of adult periodontitis term with chronic periodontitis. In the 1989 classification system, the adult periodontitis category included patients aged 35 years or more and in which there was a slow rate of disease progression. The periodontal breakdown was consistent with the presence of local factors. Now, this condition, this disease may occur in patients less than 35 years also. So, this age bar was removed in the new classification system. Now, both aggressive and chronic periodontitis, they were divided into three classes on the basis of severity of periodontal destruction, slight, moderate and severe. Slight when the clinical attachment loss was 1 to 2 mm, moderate when the clinical attachment loss was 3 to 4 mm and severe when the clinical attachment loss was 5 mm or more. Two terminologies were eliminated from the 1999 classification system that is the prepubertal periodontitis and refractory periodontitis. Now prepubertal periodontitis according to the 1989 AAP classification system refer to the severe periodontal disease in children. However, severe periodontal disease in children may occur due to systemic diseases or it may occur as an independent entity also. So this was a very variable group. So this term prepubertal periodontitis was eliminated from the 99 classification system. The refractory periodontitis cases are those cases which in spite of being treated adequately with the non-surgical and surgical periodontal therapy do not respond and the periodontal disease is still progressing in these patients. However, there are many factors which determine the disease progression. For example, the extent and severity of the disease at the time of diagnosis, the type of therapy provided, was the therapy in conjunction with the antibiotic therapy or not. Other factors like tooth related factors like furcation involvement and the environmental factors like smoking or stress, these all affect the disease progression. So because of this reason, the refractory periodontitis was also eliminated from the new classification system. Another important change in this classification system was the replacement of term necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis with necrotizing periodontal diseases. Now this replacement was done because Clinically, it is very difficult to differentiate between necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis and necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis. So, these both conditions were grouped under the same, under, under a single terminology that is necrotizing periodontal diseases. Periodontal abscesses and periodontitis due to endodontic lesions was also introduced in this classification because these conditions were not considered in any of the previous classification systems. Lastly, Developmental and acquired deformities were also included in this classification system because these affect the outcome of the therapy and the long term maintenance of the patient. So friends, this was all about the classification systems that have been given before the recent 2017 classification system. Everything that I discuss in my video lectures is available in my book Perio Basics. This book is available on my website periobasics.com and socialpublications.co.in. A direct PayPal link to purchase this book has been given in the description below. So, I'll see you next time with the recent 2017 classification system for periodontal and peri-implant diseases and conditions. See you next time. Thank you.